I'm Dr. Ann Duncan, Director of Animal Health at the Detroit Zoo. I'm going to talk to you about some examinations that we performed recently on four of our chimpanzees. We have a large troop of chimpanzees and we like to examine them at minimum every three years, but for some of our older animals we find that it's important to examine them more often. We recently performed exams on Trixie, Bubbles, Amara, and Abby. These four chimpanzees are growing older, they're a little more geriatric than the rest, and so we like to examine them more often. One of the questions that we're trying to answer through this work is to compare ultrasound images that are taken from animals while they're awake to ultrasound images taken while they're under anesthesia. Ultrasound is a very valuable tool that we use to look at heart disease in great apes. We are one of the very few zoos that's been able to train our chimpanzees to cooperate for ultrasounds. They come over to the mesh and raise their arms up and we're able to use the ultrasound probe to collect images that look something like this. This image shows the pumping heart of one of our chimpanzees. And in this moving image, you can see the heart muscle contracting, and that allows the blood to be pumped out of the heart through into the rest of the body. And this looks like a very good ultrasound. It looks like the heart is strong and is able to contract and push that blood. This is important because heart disease in great apes usually involves thickening of the heart wall muscle. The muscles here that make up the left and right ventricle become thicker and thicker over time, and that makes the heart muscle less efficient and less able to pump blood the way that it needs to. So when we take these ultrasound measurements, either on awake animals or animals under anesthesia, we're able to measure the heart wall thickness, and we can actually tell whether or not heart disease is developing in that animal. During the examinations, there's a lot that needs to happen. And so I find it helpful to use a list just like this so that we can do the items in order, in the order of importance, and check them off as we go along so that we can see how the procedure is progressing. The first thing that we do is place a lot of anesthesia monitors. These are instruments that measure things like oxygen saturation and blood pressure to let us know how the patient is doing under anesthesia. We put in a catheter so that we can give fluids. We collect blood and there's a lot of different tests that we do to look at their overall health. We do a very thorough exam that includes looking in their eyes and their ears and their nose. We do a cardiac ultrasound and this is performed by a human ultrasonographer that comes in from out of town in order to help us with this project. We ultrasound the abdomen and take a look at the uterus and all of the other organs that are inside of the abdomen. We place an arterial line to measure blood pressure. We do a very thorough dental scaling to make sure the teeth are clean and make sure that there's no problems.
We give injections such as vaccines and antibiotics. We give subgu fluids. We take x-rays of their knees and elbows to look for arthritis. And then lastly, we place an instrument called an implantable loop recorder. And this is a small device that we place underneath the skin and it collects electrical activity and tells us about how the heart is beating and whether there's any arrhythmias for a three year period. My name is Dr. William Devlin. I'm a human cardiologist and I'm here today at the Detroit Zoo helping uh, the staff uh, to work with some chimpanzees. We're implanting heart monitors. What we have today is some examples of some of the devices that we use. These are all dummy devices, but are similar to what we're using today. This is a pacemaker, which uh, we implant in humans to help treat slow heartbeats. Uh, this is the old monitoring device that used to be used. It's kind of gone out of fashion because it's been replaced by a newer, smaller device, and you can see the obvious size difference. This is actually injected underneath the skin of the animal, and we do it in humans as well. Um, pretty straightforward and simple. It comes in a package like this. You can see uh, the device is, is inside here in a plastic sleeve. We uh, make a nick in the skin. injected underneath the skin and then either with just uh, steri strips or sometimes sutures close up the uh, incision. This can last up to three years, and remotely, through Bluetooth technology, we can download information about the animal's heartbeats. Depending on what we see, different decisions can be made about treatment and can really have a big impact. We've seen lots of interesting rhythm problems from the animals. amazing technology that has come from humans now gone back to help animals and we're excited to be here. One of the questions that I often get is what causes heart disease in great apes? The answer is that we don't know. The Great Ape Heart Project is a large collaborative effort of scientists getting together to try to unravel the cause of heart disease in the four species of great apes. The Possibilities include nutritional, there may be genetic components, 
There could be something related to captivity that's causing heart disease. Human cardiologists, veterinary cardiologists, pathologists, nutritionists, and epidemiologists who study patterns of disease are all working together in the Great Ape Heart Project to try to find answers. At the end of the exams, we move each chimpanzee into our radiology room so that we can take some quick x-rays. We're going to take a film of the chest and for that we sit the chimpanzees up so that their belly moves out of the way and we can get a good image of their lungs. A few of the chimps also need x-rays of their knees and their hips to make sure that they don't have any signs of arthritis.